everyone welcome back at DK test drives today I am uh, driving again in an Italian car uh, but not a small Fiat 500 this time it's the big brother of the Fiat 500 so I am in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce uh, so this is a 2.2 liter diesel engine with 210 horsepower and I have to say on the inside of the car um, it's very nice you have those nice port seats where I am sitting very very good in um, I have the nice little steering wheel over here which is a bit coined to me um, you have the start and stop uh, button over here which is of course a bit typical to the Italians uh, it's a bit like a Ferrari um, and then the nice thing is those nice long pellets over here and the funny thing is about this car when you switch both pellets at the same time like this I'm in neutral and that's identical the same thing as in a Ferrari or in a Lamborghini um, so if you go to an event and you can just pull the two pellets and rev the car I mean it's not something you will do with this diesel but yeah it's it's cool and it's typical to the Italian cars and this interior also the leather over here over here I mean those are nice things um, and enjoyable if you like design but I have to say that I really like to be inside here of the car and I will show you in a few bits the, the exterior of the car, which I really like because it's a nice color, it's a nice specification that they've made on this car. Um, so yeah, it's a good start of the day. Here it is guys, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce from the outside. Now, what the typical first thing we see in the front is this nice triangle over here which is of course very typical to the brand Alfa Romeo, the Giulia has the same thing. And then you has these two grills over here, so when you look from a bit further, it's a very aggressive nose, especially also with these headlights over here, you have like an eyebrow over here, which is yeah, very sexy and aggressive at the same time in my opinion. And then what I really like about this car are these wheels. I mean, look at this. You have these nice black wheels with the yellow brake calipers, which is of course very, very nice also. And I mean, if you look at the side of the car, you see that yellow coming out with the black wheels and the gray of the car. It's, it's very sexy. And then of course, the typical Veloce badge because this is the Veloce um, spec of the car and then of course the Q4 which stands for Quadrifoglio or Q4 stands for Quadrifoglio or something like that I'm not an Italian so I don't know if I speaking it correctly or not but if there are some Italians watching please correct me so moving forward on the outside of the car we have these massive exhausts over here well it's not that massive as you would expect because if you look at the insides there's just a small tiny little exhaust over there but I mean if you look from here it's looking pretty good and then if we open the trunk of the car you will see excuse me there's some stuff over here but you have a very decent space over there you can enter a lot of things and then what's pretty easy is this thing over here so you can just move the seats forward and that's yeah pretty easy and you have a lot of more space then and then of course you have the button to close the trunk automatically which is also necessary on a trunk like this and then let's take a look at the 
back of the car so um, again 1 meter 82 83 so I'm entering and that's going pretty good so as you can see I am sitting comfortable I have enough leg space over here so it's it's pretty good of course if you sit in the middle you have that console over here because it's an all-wheel drive so you have the, the rear wheels who has also traction so that's why there's a tunnel over there but I mean for four people it's pretty good pretty good space and if we take a closer look at the front and especially the cockpit you have that nice steering wheel with a basic cockpit so that's a bit of shame but it's not something that is embarrassing me um, because it, it goes with the rest of the car so yeah I mean it's pretty good you have the ZF gearbox stitching which is the same or uh, kind of the same as in the BMWs but I mean look at this you have these nice sport seats over here the nice console and then everything is just aligned in one thing over there and that's yeah that's pretty good I like it first thing of course you see when you enter the car is the seats and let's be honest was too too mad So again, first thing you see when you enter the car, of course, is the seats, or that's in my opinion. Well, look at these seats. They are so beautiful. I like this thing. It's like they are, yeah, I don't know how to say it, but there are some little holes in it. And the stitching over here also. And you have that big thing over here. So when you sit in it, let me show you I'm sitting pretty good it's almost like I am in a, in, a, in a sport seat like a Recaro or Sparco seat you know it's very close and that I like that so that's a good thing and then once we're at the inside of the car we have that nice button over here to start the car which is something like in the Ferrari or in a Lamborghini or those sport cars um, I guess it's something typical to the Italian cars and then over here you have everything that is uh, set up for the cruise control or the line assist all those buttons are over here over here it's everything for the radio so to change the channel to um, higher up or lower down the volume and then of course the um, the buttons to pick up the phone when someone is calling you at least if your Bluetooth is activated, of course. Um, so let me show you the display. As you can see, it's an analog display over here. Um, so that's a bit older dated. They could have done a better job on this one, in my opinion, but okay. I like this screen personally. Um, it's all aligned like I said earlier um, but you have these small things over here this is very nice quality I like it then you have here over here the nice ZF gearbox which is also something they use in the BMWs you have over here the space to put in your key just like this and then you don't have to put it anywhere else these are three drive modes so you have D and A um, so the N is neutral is normal the A is um, the mode where you drive economically and then the D is sort of a sport mode I can show you then the display over here is changing so if I'm putting it at neutral or an A it's always changing and then of course the car is handling differently 
So if you put it in the D mode, then the pedal will be more reactive than if you put it in A, for example, you will drive slowly and the car will not have all its torque in the same time. So yeah, that's, that's the same thing at the BMWs or the Audis or the Mercedes with the different drive modes. So yeah, simple things. I really like this screen to be honest because it's a bit like in uh, the BMWs so you have all the basic information that you need um, you have the climate control that you can do over here um, you have your navigation with the map uh, you can also connect your phone to Apple CarPlay um, so yeah it has everything you need to be honest so I like this car I really do. You feel the 210 horsepower pushing it. I like it. It's of course a big car. It's a huge car. Um, it weighs 1,670 kilograms. So. It's normal that it's not a bump when it's starting, even with the 210 horsepower. But it has a lot of torque and it's enjoyable. Um, I was a few minutes ago on the highway and I had to pass another car and you just have to push and then you can pass over the car and without any trouble. So. That's a really good thing about this car. I have this Stelvio in uh, a 160 horsepower version, but I guess it's not enough, uh, in my opinion, though, um, for the drivability and if you have to overtake another vehicle, for example, those things. So this 210 version is much, much better. Nice thing is when you drive an SUV, you can drive these kind of roads, which I'll show you. It's an old road with yeah, the pain in the ass to drive with a normal car. But with this Stelvio, no problem at all. And even if it's driving pretty hard for an SUV because it's a Veloce model, uh, which is more sportive, um, I am very comforted in these seats. And I kind of like them, to be honest. I got this car also again from uh, Gantt Motors, which is an official dealer of Fiat Alfa Romeo jeep and also a bart so gantt motors many thanks again for the trust i can't really imagine driving this but then in the quadrifoglio version with the 510 horsepower i mean just the sound yeah i can't describe it but I, I guess it's it's a very nice thing to drive with. Maybe not as a daily. I think this one is better as a daily because it's a diesel, so fuel consumption, those things are much better than if you drive the 510 horsepower version. But okay, that's a choice that you make. But I really like the design of those Alfa Romeos, whether it's the Stelvio or the Giulia, uh, the 4C, for example, it's a um, perfect car in my opinion it has a magnific design so yeah I really like the Alfa Romeos to be honest so and I'm very glad that I can drive one today because I've never driven one before so I'm very pleased so I've already talked about the things that I like and, and how I experience the drivability of the car um, so time to say what I don't like um, first of all is the, um, the gearbox well let me explain a bit it's not that I don't like this ZF gearbox because I do like it but when you drive it normally in the city center um, so 
between zero and 50 kilometers an hour, it's like the gearbox don't really know what to do sometimes. So what do I mean? Sometimes it's, it's like the, the, the clutch is, is slipping, I don't know. Um, so that's the thing. What I do exceptionally like are the usage of these pallets. I mean, they are, it's so soft. You, can, you can't maybe, hear, you can maybe hear it, but it's a, a little click and it's just so soft. I really like it. And even if you drive sportively, um, you don't have that bomb, bomb, bomb that you have in, in, for example, an Audi or in a BMW or most of the cars with these pallets have that thing that you have. Bomb, bomb. You don't have that over here because it's, it's so smooth. So I guess that this gearbox is made to drive more sportively than to drive in the city center. At least that's my opinion. Uh, then the second thing that I, again, <laughs> don't like, um, maybe it's just my fault, but it's the brakes. But I have to say the car is braking pretty good, but of course we have an SUV, we have a lot of weight, 1670 kilograms, which is not too much because we're talking about an SUV and compared to his competitors who are at 1,800 kilo, 1,900 kilograms. Yeah, this one is pretty good. Um, but if you drive normally, the brakes are good. Nothing to say about it. But when you come fast and you have to go in the corner, last minute braking, I can guarantee you better use your two feet to push that <laughs> brake pedal because you won't brake. I've now experienced also the, the three drive modes, as I said before, so the DNA, as the Alfa Romeo calls it. So when I switch over here to the right, the car is switching to the D, which is the drive and the more sporty mode with the, the red over here also. Um, so that's cool. I like it. And the gearbox is also better when I drive in D. Then I'm, when I drive in neutral, uh, I don't know, it's the switching uh, is at a better timing, I guess, but it's better. So I will now take a roundabout and, and show you with the pedals. Um, the thing that I try to explain is that, yeah, for me personally, I like it. And the thing is, these pellets are not on the steering wheel. So when I'm turning, they are not coming with me. That's why they are so big also. So I'm at the roundabout. First gear. The four wheel drive is now taking all, everything. That's pretty nice. So now at 120 kilometers an hour in a few secs. So yeah, I mean, this is not a sports car for sure, but it handles pretty good. And that four wheel drive system, I have to say Alfa Romeo did a pretty good job. The thing is with those four wheel drives is that you always have kind of a weird feeling whether it's on the front or at the rear of the car that's acting abnormal when you drive in those country roads for example or if you take a roundabout a little bit quicker uh, this one not it's very good their drivetrain is very very good everything is absolutely working perfectly together the front drivetrain the rear drivetrain the gearbox, the transmission, the engine, everything is, yeah, it's, they've done a pretty good job. I'm now driving in the city center because I was wondering how the car would act in a other environment than on the, the national ways, for example, or, or country roads. 
uh, because it's a large car you have a lot of space inside um, but I have to say that I don't mind driving it in the city center because it's it's acting good um, the steering wheel is not too hard so you can maneuver pretty good it's a very decent car guys So how would I rate the car? Well, to be honest, I've given the Audi A3 an 8.5 on 10. Um, I'm going to rate this one a 9 because I really like it. Um, even if I'm not a huge SUV fanatic, but I like the design of the exterior. I like the interior, you have a lot of space. Uh, they've done a nice thing with this dashboard, the seats. What could have been better is, yeah, this cockpit who is a little bit old dater, um, the brakes and the gearbox, in my opinion, as I'm driving now in the city center, which is not perfect, but uh, it's small details. Uh, so overall, I, I really rate it a nine, um, a nine on 10, so. I'm really glad that I could have done this test because I never drove with an Alfa Romeo before and especially not an SUV because they never had one of course uh, but they've done a pretty good job on this one absolutely so I'm now on my way back to bring back the car to uh, Gantt Motors um, I really enjoyed driving this car and I hope you enjoyed the video also. Please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to give me a like and a comment and I'll see you soon. Bye.